Chill with Julian on the brown note and a review of The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. Um, I don't really rate The Conjuring series. I didn't give the first film a particularly good review, but I did really like the second. I thought that was a much better film. Part of the reason was is that I really hate the leads. Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmagia. Vera Farmagia is someone that I kind of fell for a bit in The Departed. And also up in the air, she was really good in that. But most of the times I've seen her, she re- she's a bit like Maggie Gyllenhaal. She just doesn't quite do it for me. Not convinced about her acting abilities, to be honest. Um, and the fact that they dominated the first film playing um, the infamous Ed and Lorraine Warren, a couple of hacks who got into exorcisms and stuff in the 70s and were universally discredited it was a very disturbing thing to hear that the conjuring the devil made me do it is the eighth film in the conjuring franchise so there have been the annabelle movies and the uh, the nun i haven't seen any of them but the general consensus is that they're not actually even as good as the conjuring movies but the second film the conjuring 2 set in london was um it didn't have as much of the leads in it who i found almost singularly trite um, and it focused on this family in London, so it is a lot more enjoyable for me. Uh, they've come back with a third Conjuring movie, and this time around, there's a kid having an exorcism at the start, and the whole thing is based on a true life murder story where the guy pled. So basically, the eight year old boy is possessed by the devil at the start. The uh, Lorraine and Ed Warren lead an exorcism on him, and during the course of this exorcism, the devil passes on to his. 20 year old brother the 20 year old brother then has an argument with somebody groping his girlfriend his landlord who won't let go of her and stabs him to death brutally and then says that he was possessed by the devil Um, in in real life he was very understandably angry that this guy was attacking has grabbed his girlfriend Uh, and um, it all went to hell in a handbasket, and he had apparently lots of mental health problems anyway. But the whole film is framed around making his defence that he was possessed by the devil, Uh, uh, which happened, and uh, he got 20 years. (laughs) Well, no, he didn't didn't actually get 20 years. He got first-degree manslaughter in real life, and that was a potential 20 years he could have served. He ended up serving about five years which is a pretty, for stabbing someone 20 times is a, a, a reasonable let off. But he certainly didn't get off because the devil, I mean, the fact that he was um, a previously blameless kid probably went a long way to that. Um, so the rest of the movie follows the fact that they're trying to find evidence that of what happened in the original kit with the original kid, and they find that this house had a goat skull, rather nice looking ornament, I wouldn't mind that in my home, underneath the house, and that somebody has tried to possess the kids, and they try and find out what's been going on. The one truly amazing part about this film is, um, they go to this old priest who was involved in bringing down a satanic cult. He's played by John Noble, Oh my God, he's so wonderful. He's the guy that was the uh, steward of Gondor in the Lord of the Rings movies. And so I was watching going, who is this guy? I know him. He's very, very old now. Um, but yeah, he, him being in the film was almost enough for me to enjoy it. Um, and we we sort of find out that he's been involved in the background. It's not a surprising story. Um, I did telegraph every single thing that happened. Um, Patrick Wilson's character has kind of a heart attack and he's sort of waylaid a bit. Vera Farmagia has a connection with the person that's doing the evil. Um, She's like some twisted person who's into Satanism and has called up this curse on this family. And it's um, it's horror horror fans are so hard done by. It is a beautifully shot film and the uh, soundstage is excellent. It is also incredibly boring. It's a really boring film. It's a very predictable film. Uh, I'm only doing a quick review of it because it's not worth it. Um, Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmagia are slightly less aggravatingly. See, what I loved about The Exorcist and Amityville Horror and The Omen 
is a lot of it was grounded in this really almost banal, realistic setting. Whereas the Conjuring films have this really melodramatic air to them, which undercuts the horror. The, the films that I saw that scared me when I was a kid were these very sort of um, very straight laced films where horror was often from humans as well as it was from supernatural elements. So I think that undercuts everything. But it's so there's so little imagination on display here. There's it's not as much a reliance on jump scares as some of the previous installments. I do feel, however, that um, I think the longer intense scenes of sort of devilly stuff is a bit better. But there is nothing that's imaginative. There's no sort of monster or sequence where you really feel like there's a great deal of imagination going on here. Um, it's a really quite a boring film. It looks nice. Um, the characters themselves are as, as almost the same level as um, Seventh Heaven, if you can imagine that, or my, A Little House on the Prairie. They're like this heightened white bread world, and it just doesn't quite fit with the horrors unless you do it in a in a david lynch style way where there's actual genuine terror but nothing here is imaginative enough uh, it's just worth a once through um because it's really well made and there are some longer intense sequences which you kind of get it over the line but i'm going to give the conjuring the devil made me do it probably the weakest of the three a five and a half out of ten and for no reason at all, Kirsty McCall, a New England.